If episode 5 of Ahsoka was a look back during the Clone Wars during Ahsoka's life, then episode 6 was just a sneak peek into the future. What should we expect from the new Filoni-verse, from the new Mandoverse, that is going to make waves? I promise you that. I mean, episode 6 was just a small teaser from Dave Filoni. What is possible in the Star Wars universe and the unlimited resources he has from giving us great content like what we saw from Thrawn, from the Night Sisters, and also the newly introduced Thrawn's army, the Night Troopers. Firstly, I gotta say this, and just as we reviewed episode 6 yesterday, uh, we have to look forward to the future now because there are so many possibilities that episode 7 could show. Think of this as just a sneak peek, a trailer for episode 7, because I just couldn't contain myself. I want to talk with you guys. Talk to me down below in the comments, because here's my thoughts. I honestly think the Mandoverse, headed by Dave Filoni, of course, not only feels like a direct contingent, Continuation to the events of Episode 6 Return of the Jedi, but it also feels like the sequels don't exist in the Filoni-verse. They never even happen, kinda. There are some hints, because I think behind the scenes they are pressuring Dave, but as you saw yesterday in Ahsoka Episode 6, it is a complete new chapter in Star Wars, nothing to do with Skywalkers, nothing to do with Rey or Palpatine and so on. I mean, it's a freaking new galaxy, for crying out loud, so there's a whole lot going Going on as you saw. And the attention to detail in this new galaxy was just beautiful. I mean, immediately we get introduced to a Purgle graveyard that was not a ring around that planet. Peridia just looks worn and just has that Blade Runner feel that I love. And as you saw, the attention to detail extended to the stormtroopers and to Thrawn. I think those stormtroopers look a bit rough simply due to their lack of resources, of course. And if you look closely at the end there, even Thrawn's uniform is kind of torn and stitched back together here and there. Another detail you might have missed, and it's going to be explored in episode 7, is how interesting of Thrawn to have grown up now, to have leveled up, kind of, because if you remember in Star Wars Rebels, Thrawn underestimated the Force and did not have the respect that it deserved, but you clearly see in episode 6, not only is he using Night Sister magic, but he also respects and fears Force sensitives like Ahsoka, who is coming and he is furious because Morgan and the Night Sisters did not warn him about her. And what I really loved about the Night Troopers, about these new look Stormtroopers, the designs make it look like they have evolved into not an Imperial army anymore, but more of a Thrawn cult. They were shouting Thrawn, Thrawn before he got introduced, and that is just beautiful because Dave Filoni, outside of other Star Wars directors that directed the Star Wars sequels, he does read the Star Wars novels. You see, in the Thrawn books, there were actually rumblings between Imperial officers. There were rumors that some of them hated Thrawn. You see, in those novels, the regiment that was serving Thrawn, the Imperial troopers, they had exemplary fashion, and Thrawn treated his troopers so great that his troopers, he had some of the most loyal regiments in the Empire. So loyal, in fact, that many of his peers, many other admirals in the Imperial Command questioned whether his troopers were more loyal to the Empire or loyal to Thrawn. Now, the gold plating or the gold patching that we see in the Chimera ship and also in some of the troopers, Captain Enoch being one of the more prominent ones. He is a new character that seems to have been automatically beloved by all fans. I mean, his armor was one of the more distinguished ones and unique ones out there. But I really want to talk about these night troopers, this new army that seems to be extremely unique to Thrawn. Immediately, speculations theories started running around the internet, forums, reddits, YouTube videos. I mean, this new army is so rich in context that I actually don't know where to begin. There's so much, but I'm going to start by saying that a lot of you started speculating the Night Troopers are actually an army of the undead. So this is where the divide I see a lot going on because some believe that these troopers are actually dead and they have been reanimated by the Night Sisters, similar to how Marak was by Morgan Elsbeth. And some are not a fan of this theory actually saying that they are survivors, similar 
similar to Thrawn and Ezra, they survived the trip to Peridia, and that's why their armor is being patched up. So I'm more of a fan that this is Thrawn's attempt of making sure his crew is alive and well armed using local techniques and cultures to do so. I mean, you see the armor, everybody has a scuffed up looking armor, but I think the new decorated armor of the night troopers could simply be explained as field repairs originally and Thrawn appreciate also art. These two were just combined. I don't think he would really mind much that his troopers have taken upon themselves to add a little bit more flair. He might have even embraced the change. This is clearly shown because they love him so much they chant his name. If you think about it, the golden streaks and the patches in the troopers' armor look very similar to the weld marks in Kylo Ren's helmet when he destroyed it in episode 8 and then in episode 9 he put it all back together. This is what it kind of reminds me. They have made repairs with local metals in Peridia. However, there is an enticing possibility. There is something beautiful about Thrawn using Nightsister magic in a scientific level. It is so Thrawn for him to have dead troopers be brought back to life by Nightsister magic and having himself a zombie legion that could go possibly horribly wrong. It is a great concept that kind of goes in line with a modern take of the old Death Troopers novel. Because just as Lars Mikkelsen said in an interview, he is not playing Thrawn similar to how he played him in the Star Wars Rebels series. He said so himself that this version of Thrawn is completely different, a more mature Thrawn. So I think that this version of Thrawn is much more dangerous because unlike his first appearance, here he seems to understand what the Force actually is and shows a great appreciation for it. Instead of just dismissing this as just a gimmick, he has embraced not only the Force but dark magic. So his ship and his crew might be imbued by supernatural forces that are keeping them together even better than before. So here's what could be possibly happening. The night troopers, some of them may have, may be undead, resurrected by magic, but not all of them. I think as Thrawn arrived here, he tried to conquer and continue understanding the system, but instead something big ancient and very nasty dark kicked his behind and killed the other ships and most of his fleet and troopers. In desperation, he then aligned with the Night Sisters to try and survive whatever lurks here and that allowed them to make this zombie legion the Night Troopers. This could be an explanation. Remember, when arriving, Balan says to Shinhadi that something is calling to him. He will end the cycle. He wants greater power that is not fleeting. So so Balin perhaps is sensing or knows something is here that is much darker than Thrawn and the Night Sisters. Those who survived and didn't want to end up this way became tougher and more brutal stormtroopers serving Thrawn. So quite literally, they have decorated the survivors. The idea of this being a peaceful gal new galaxy was thrown out the moment we saw those purgle skeletons roaming around and the moment we landed on the planet. It does seem gritty and dark much more than other systems. Of course, I have something to say also about the Yuzhan Vong. I am just a stupid fan of those legends, ideas. The expanded universe is so rich and it would make sense because we're in a new galaxy. And, but what we know about the Yuzhan Vong is that they were definitely from another galaxy. Dave Filoni also almost brought them into canon in the Clone Wars animated show. But that idea, of course, was scrapped last minute. So could he revive the Yuzhan Vong into canon again? And in this new galaxy, they are the looming threat. This all of a sudden turned out into a discussion for episode 8 too, but you have to admire what Dave Filoni did with the Ahsoka series. I thought I thought myself it was going to be revolutionary, but it turned out to be something much, much greater than a lot of people expected. I mean, do you realize that the complaints from the first episodes have quietly and slowly subsided? Ezra is back. Ahsoka will be back in this new galaxy. Thrawn, Morgan Elizabeth, the Night Sisters. 
leaders, they're all gonna come together. And we haven't even talked a lot about Balin and Shin Hadi and their allegiances. It seems like Thrawn has a bit of a problem with them, but they might align themselves with Ahsoka. They might go on their different path. We might have a three-way standoff in the end by episode eight. So who will duel with who and who will join who? It's just all crazy right now. So episode seven is gonna be great, but episode eight, it's just gonna be epic, just bombastic. It's gonna be one of the greatest finales in Star Wars series. It would be just beautiful in my opinion, but a lot is expecting us in episode seven with Ahsoka coming back. And wow, what a finale episode eight will be. I just can't wait. By just seeing episode six, you know that this show is gonna go off with a bang in season two whenever it comes. That's gonna be awesome too. So guys, leave all of your thoughts down below. I can't wait to see what do you think.